we've been in a downtrend on crude oil using a trend filter. Now remember the trend filter is beautiful because I have all the supply demand indicators built into this Renko bar. This is not a standard candle, your standard candle Renko. I have a lot of ingredients built into this trend filter. It's not just standard MAs or what have you. I call this my supply demand chart because it's going to tell me if I'm going to be a net buyer or net seller using Fibonacci retracements or using my retracement trade that we uh, catch the wrongly positioned counter trend traders. So this is very important you stay on the side of this trend filter. Now, I have three MAs on the trend filter. I have a longer intermediate and a smaller MA. The smaller MA is a small dash white line. That's the most important one you want to stay on the side of. If you can position yourself on the side of that MA, it really, really helps you get on the right side of the market because the open versus close on these candles will tell me the supply and demand of the market. So if I'm closing below, which I had a 90% candle close below here, my first trend change, uh, we started really downtrending really hard just after 6 o'clock. And you can tell that once you get an open versus close, meaning the body of the candle, I don't care about the wicks, it can exceed that small MA, just can't close a whole candle above it if you're not, if you want to be in a, a trend up or trend down, hard trend up, hard trend down. So if you're below that, you're in a downtrend. So we know we've been in a downtrend on crude this morning. You can see we've been in a downtrend. So we only want to take short opportunities. There's only two trades that we take then, two retracement trades. I mean two trades. We take a retracement trade, and that's catching the wrongly positioned traders. So when there's an offset color candle that fires off on your trend chart, right there, you're, you were already below your small MA. You got below your intermediate MA. And what I like to see is I like to see the small cross down through the intermediate. That usually tells me I'm going to get a nice little retracement trade coming up. If, if, if my candle is closing below that small and intermediate MA, then I know that I'm probably going to get a counter trend traders coming in, which we did. It popped the market back up. So I'm looking for a short opportunity at this swing high. And how we, how we look for opportunities to pop in the trades, we use our momentum chart with the Fibonacci arrows to the far right. And my momentum chart will fire these red arrows right at the bar close. It should catch the swing high or swing low using the trend filter as a guide. So if I come back up and touch that small MA intra bar, and I'm in a downtrend, I'm below it, then if I get a Fibonacci arrow that fires on this small MA over here, I mean on the small uh, Renko bar, these are Fibonacci arrows and they fire on a retracement, then I know that I want to look at taking the market short. So at the close of that arrow, you can fire yourself in the trade. Now, if you want confirmation that the arrow can stop the market, I use market delta, which is right below it. Now, market delta, the neat thing about it is, is I also have a smaller MA on it to know if we're closing below it. So if I get a partial candle close below that small MA, which we did, then you know you're in a downtrend. So as long as you know that you're in a downtrend at that level, you can enter the market, place your stop. A lot of traders place their stop two ticks above the swing high or swing low. You can also place your stop after the partial candle close above the small MA, right at the low of that bar within one tick. You will get stopped out more often on that, but your stops are very small because if it M tops or W bottoms, you have to re-enter the trade. It happened like that yesterday, but then it had a huge trade, so it covered the small stop anyway. But Usually, two ticks below the swing high or swing low should hold the market. But that, that stop is going to be right around 11 to 13 ticks. You're risking $110 to $103 per trade. But we're still trying to get $400 to $600 average per trade. So it's still a 4 to 1 reward to risk, 5 to 1 reward to risk ratio. If you want to uh, lower your stop to around 9 ticks, then you can place it 1 tick below or above the entry bar. But if it does M top or W bottom, you will have to make sure that you re-enter the market on a W or an M. Okay, so just heads up on that.
So that's that's the two trades. We want to do a retracement trade. A retracement trade. So th there's two setups. All you have to know in all these markets. There's a retracement trade, and that is just if you're if the trend filter is going down and you get an offset color candle that prints. What that is is we just want to look at positioning ourselves short in the market right here on the retracement. Now how we do that? We have two. Two Fibonacci arrows. I have one right next to that, which is called my sim dots. So when that arrow fire, when that closed right here, that closed a green bar that tells you that counter trend traders are coming in against a trend filter. You want to see these sim dots then on a retracement trade. If I come within a couple ticks of these sim dots, which it did, and then I get negative market delta to fire in the trade, which I did, and a partial candle close below it, that small MA. That was an entry. So my retracement trade called the high here, and not to mention my momentum trade because it was touching the small MA called the high over here also. So both trades worked. Either you took a momentum trade or a retracement trade. They both worked. It doesn't matter because it touched the small MA on a retracement right at that level. So it really doesn't matter which one you took. But those are the two trades. You have a momentum trade and you have a retracement trade. And that's how I trade all markets. It really doesn't matter what market you look at. I don't care if you trade currencies, trade the Forex. I don't care if you trade all futures, stocks, ETFs. I have traders inside and outside the room that trade all those different markets. So it doesn't matter. You just want to look for two setups, a Momo trade or a retracement trade. But it has to be in the direction of the trend filter. So let me show you gold here real quick this morning. Gold if I look at gold this morning, there's been here's been the opportunity since midnight today uh, this morning. I've had three chances going on four chances right now for a for catching the rolling position traders. So what I want to do is if I look at gold, I'm in an uptrend. So I want to see I want to try to position myself on a retracement trade and try to catch these lows when an opposite color candle comes in. So when I get an offset color candle that comes in, I want to try to position myself in the market to get long at these levels on a retracement. And then you can place your stop two ticks below the swing low or one tick below the entry bar. So you can tell using this technique on all these markets, now this is a 9 sim, 9 sim Renko, <clears throat> you want to try to position yourself in these markets based upon the wrongly positioned traders getting caught, the counter trend traders. So that's what I like to do. I like to try to get position in the market based upon catching wrongly positioned traders. And the opposite color candle is a great way to do it. Opposite color candle comes in. I know I'm going to try to get that retracement. I'm trying to catch these lows. So as soon as that opposite color candle comes in, I'm already in an up uptrend. I'm in an uptrend already according to my MAs and closing above my smaller 8 MA. So I know I'm in an uptrend already. So now here's another retracement trade coming up on gold possibly. Got another one coming right now as we speak. So how do you time it? You want to time it once you see the first opposite color bar come in. That's called a retracement trade. You want to time it looking where your SIM dots are. So if you come with a couple ticks of your SIM dots or worker profile, you can look, pull yourself in with market delta and try to catch these retracement levels. So that's what we try to do. We, the trend filter is already, the candles are already built in with all the supply and demand ingredients. So this might, makes my life quite easy when I'm looking at multiple markets at the same time. Because what I can do is I can see right away that gold was in an uptrend. So if I took this chart and I place it over here without looking at trade setups, if I take that chart, it's the same thing, right, that you see in the room. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to catch that swing low, that swing low, that swing low. And then now we're trying to do another retracement trade as we speak if these SIM dots hold. 
so so if you look at that, make sure we understand what we're looking at here. So if I were to put those beside each other, the 9 sem and the 9 sem, with the trade execution and also the chart after midnight, so there we go. That's what I'm trying to do as a trader. I'm trying to position myself with the 9, with my, uh, my, uh, my trend chart. I'm trying to position myself with the trend chart. So if I look at the trend chart and I look at where you should be trying to execute your tra uh, trade setups, you're trying to execute your trade setups based upon catching the wrong position traders at these swing lows. And the way to do it is to time it with market delta, sim dots, and Fibonacci arrows on a retracement only after you get an opposite color candle that comes in on retracement trades or if we come down and touch a small AMA, which it did here. And here we had uh, mo several momentum trades and, and um, retracement, retracement trades on gold this morning. So as you can see, there's no trade set up right now on gold. It's working actually on gold as we speak right now for another setup as we speak to the upside. So that will that's how we want to try to do things. We want to take this trend chart and try to execute our trades in the direction of the trend chart using A, a retracement trade, and B, a momentum trade. Retracement trade has to have an opposite color candle to come in to catch the rolling position traders. B, a momentum trade is where you have all green candles or all red candles, right? And it comes down to touch that small MA and you get a Fibonacci ear to fire and you want to pop in the trade. All right, so that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're trying to position ourselves. Now, here's gold versus crude this morning on the trend chart. Totally opposite charts, right? But that trend chart tells, totally tells me since midnight what to do. I know as a trader that to stay on the right side of the market, I know that the trend filter that I have created has all the supply and demand indicators already built in. You don't, you don't, you don't want to have a chart that has 20 different indicators to all match up. I already built into the program all the filters that must agree. They all have to agree. If all the filters agree, then you'll get a red or green candle that forms on the Rinko bar. That's why this Rinko is totally different than your standard Rinko or your standard candle. It's not the same. It doesn't truly measure supply and demand or standard Rinko bar. This trend filter will measure strictly supply and demand. So what we have to do, we have to know which side of the market we want to trade. And we know we have two setups. We have a retracement trade and a momentum trade. The best way to trade the markets is waiting for an opposite color to candle come in. Right now, we are all red right now on crude, so you only want to take momentum shorts. You do not have a retracement trade right now on crude. But you are forming a possible retracement trade on gold right now. So retracement trades require us to come down on the sim dots within a couple ticks. Not necessarily all the time because one time you're going to get a deep retracement down to here and you'll be below the sim dots. So one time this morning on gold, you'll probably retrace down and touch that longer term MA. So you'll be below the sim dots already, but you maybe touch the market profile, which you can still take the trade. My point is, is you're trying to position yourself now in gold long in the market on a retracement right now. So you want to try to find support on a retracement, A versus symmetry dots, B versus market profile. That's what you do on a retracement trade when you get an opposite color candle. The trend, trend chart educates us and tells us to look for that retracement. Now, crude is totally opposite. I'm not looking for a retracement trade right now. I don't care where the sim dots are. They really don't mean anything to me on, the, on, on my Fibonacci arrows. What I care about right now is if we come and get any momentum trades. So any momentum trades in the market that come up and touch my small MA, then I know that I got, if it comes up, intra bar, tick, 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 touches it, a Fibonacci arrow fires on my three sim over here, like it did, right here at this high. At 95, see this is where it came up and touched the intra bar right here. So not only was that a retracement trade, it was a momentum trade. That was both together at the same price point in time. So that tells me I can fire in the trade at that level. Okay. So right now a Fibonacci arrow fired here. A Fibonacci arrow fired here. 
But I should have a runner from this already on crude short because this one has not came up and touched my small MA, so it's a little bit more aggressive. All right? I want it to touch inch bar. Enter, tick, 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 touch. So this fib arrow that fired right here is different than this fib arrow up here. The, to the difference is, is that I came up and touched the small MA at this area on a momentum trade. That's a requirement that I like to have. If you notice right here, I am way away from my small MA. So this fib arrow that fired over here is a no trade for me. That just happened right now. I don't want to take that. It's too shallow. It's called a shallow retracement. I like to see it come back up. Tick, entry bar. Tick, 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 tick. Touch an entry bar. Even exceed it. Then get a fib arrow fires. Let market delta pull you in. Then you have a continuation pattern. All right, but that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get either a retracement trade or momentum trade. But what you want to try to do is stay on the right side of the market. You want to try to stay on the right side of the market. You do not want to go on the wrong side of the trend filter. Because if you go on the wrong side of the trend filter, it's going to create some problems for you in trading because you are not catching the wrongly positioned traders. And we do not want to do that. Our goal as traders is to be opposite of the counter trend traders. If they're buying, we're selling. If they're selling, they're buying. Typically, and I tell traders this all the time, when I was a guest speaker at the Las Vegas trade show, Futures Trade Show, had nearly 6,000 traders there across the world. And the majority of traders that I talk to are counter trend traders. The majority of vendors that show their product out at the Las Vegas trade show and the New York trade show and the Orlando trade show, all three that I've been to, they're mainly counter trend traders. I'm talking a little bit over probably 90%. I very rarely see retracement traders with trend. And I don't get it. I don't know why. I don't know why vendors actually sell programs that always counter trend trade the market. They always want to try to catch the high or they want to catch the low. I'm going to tell you right now, I know a lot about the market, and I it's impossible for me to catch the high and low of the market. What I can do, though, is, and my filter has this built into it, I can catch lower highs and higher lows in the market because I know that trend has already been established. And that's what we have to do. That's what the filter does. The filter's main ingredient on this trend filter is looking at higher lows, lower highs. This right here is a great time to get short the market right there. Why? It's not only you're catching the rolling position traders here. Offset color candle comes in. We're right at that level and this level right here. You're catching the counter trend traders. That's a lower high. This is a lower high. There's one thing you can learn about trading is catching lower highs and higher lows. So what I do is I want to look for a momentum trade and retracement trade. As a trader, my methodology is very simple. I'm smarter than my trading opponents. I know that what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to catch a, I'm trying to buy high and sell higher, or I'm trying to short low and buy lower. I'm not trying to buy low, sell high. You know a novice trader, if they say their methodology is to buy low or sell high, that's almost impossible because you're always counter trend trading the market if you're trying to catch the falling knife or jump in front of the runaway train. What I have to do as a trader, I'm smarter than that, I know that I got to catch a lower, higher, higher, low. So the trend filter has that ingredient already built into it. It knows that if I'm in a downtrend, that I want to try to what? Wait till counter trend traders come in, try to buy or sell that retracement. If I'm in an uptrend, I want to wait for the counter trend traders to come in, and I want to buy or sell that retracement. And how I do that after an offset color candle comes in, that's a retracement trade. I look at this Fibonacci chart next to me and see where the sim dots are and look for market delta. If I'm looking at a momentum trade, if I'm all red candles right now, crude is all red candles. Look at this, red, 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 all red. So I can see I'm not even close to my small MA. You can project it going forward like this if you want to make it easier for yourself. You can just draw a little line right there. You can see the projected MA right there is we're not even close to touching it. So I wouldn't touch this arrow over here, far right. Until I come up and touch an inch bar, then I look at entering the trade with negative market delta. Because this swing high could get taken out pretty easy right now on shallow retracement. 
my trade setup is right up here. When it actually touched this area on the smaller MA and the intermediate, we got a Fibonacci arrow that happened at that level, and we're rolling pretty hard right now. All right, so that's what I want to try to do. I know my trend filter is going to prevent me from trying to counter trend trade the market. And that is half the battle. And that's half the battle with a lot of traders around the world. They continue to think, they continue to think that they're smarter than the market. I'm not smarter than the market. I have no idea where crude's gonna go this afternoon. I have no idea where it's gonna go tomorrow. I mean Monday. I have no idea where it's gonna be Wednesday. I have no idea where it's gonna be Friday. All I can do is measure supply and demand. That's all I can do as a trader. None of us know. There's not one trader out there that's telling traders there's a software vendor out there that tries to project where stocks are going to be or futures the next day. It's almost like using the Bradley model intraday. We're at the Vegas trade show from a Wednesday or, or from a Tuesday to Friday trading live and watching the software trade live. And we were in a hard downtrend. I had four back-to-back -back sell setups with my system. It, it was doing really well on the first day of, uh, of, the, of the trade show. And the gentleman tried to project where crude was going to be the next day every day. Four days in a row, a row he was wrong with a 25 tick stop. Four days in a row. It goes to show you you can't, and there's an algorithm that tried to project cycles. Cycles are great, but cycles cannot work on a day-to-day -day basis if you're not trading order flow. Cycles are just patterns but they're not order flow. What my trend filter does, the difference why we had four back-to-back -back winners and his software, the vendor, had four back-to-back -back losers, was he was trying to predict cycles. Pattern recognition and cycles are great, but they don't predict order flow. I use that as confluence. I love Elliott Wave, and I like three and five waves, but the way three and way five, but if it's not, if the cycle is not, or, harm, or harmonic patterns, which is, you know, 78% retracement, 76.8% retracements, 62, 1.618. I love those cycles. Elliott waves, I love those cycles. But if you're not with the trend, you're going to get killed in the market. All right? So, Gerald, just shut this off in a second. So, we're looking for another retracement trade here on gold. I'm going to go over the next setups after I shut this video off. We're looking for a momentum trade on crude. 